is, um, my name is Efe, I'm from, I'm from Cloud Health, uh, I'm software architect. I'm very happy to be here to talk to you about how VA Cloud Health help drive, um, get more granular insights and uh, help drive um, decision making inside your containers process, inside your container environments. So without further ado, I'm just going to jump straight into uh, a couple of things. So first I'm going to show you our um, containers cost history report. So if you look into our cost history, this is uh, a plain vanilla report. It shows your entire cost across your entire cloud infrastructure. So let's categorize by a dimension, say container namespaces. And these dimensions are essentially dimensions that are automatically created, that are user created by you. You can custom create whatever dimensions you like. You have a, um, uh, yeah, you can basically say, um, you know, uh, categorized by this task dimension, by namespace, or by cluster. Um, let me get rid of the non containerized cost so it'll look a little easier. So this, these are irrelevant for containers. So what you're essentially seeing is that we've grouped your container tasks into, well, namespaces. We, we just happened to create a uh, perspective dimension on namespaces. And you're taking the cost of those, of your entire con container infrastructure and showing them that, you know what, your task groupings under, for example, cube query account for this much cost per day, per hour. So at this moment, you're essentially getting cost and usage information at the task level. And it's entirely customizable. You can create your own uh, uh, categorizations. And you can also choose to zoom in, well, you zoom in directly on a specific task. For example, I want to look at, well, kubeQuery seems to be a big one here. I want to, if I wanted to look at what's going on in kubeQuery, I could specifically filter on that, if I can. and then categorize with something else by some other dimension, put into what else is going on on that. So at this level, I can see that my kubeQuery task running on my Kubernetes clusters is spending money based on these components. So EC2 compute is obviously the biggest one. This is how much you're paying for transfer, storage, et cetera. So at this moment, you've taken your, all your aggregate cluster information, Kubernetes and EKS information, we have broken them down into tasks, and then we've selected a specific task family and then dove, in there, dove down into it to see what's actually going on over there. Um, so the next thing I want to show you is our, um, our resources report. So you can see we have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of reports. Um, let me click on Kubernetes. And for the record, EKS is, in this context, a flavor of Kubernetes. Whatever, I see, whatever I'm showing you right now works exactly the same as so an EKS cluster. So the resources report gives you a really quick way of understanding how well you're uh, utilizing your resources. So you have a bunch of measures. Uh, you know, there's different intervals. There's different uh, measures you can look at. Um, right off the bat, you see how much across all your Kubernetes clusters in your entire environment, out of all the available CPU hours, how much of it are you using? So it looks like, for example, in this case, we're actually not very, making very good use of CPUs. Most, more than half of the CPU available resources are unused. Uh, you can look at nodes, you can look at memory, the uh, situation might be different when you look at memory instead. So memory is a little less utilized. And you can also choose to zoom down into specific clusters. So you, like I said, this was a, the, uh, an aggregate of all your clusters. You can select a certain subset of clusters you might have, or you can just look at all your clusters at a single uh, level. So I'm looking at all my clusters, and I see that my US1 prod cluster um, is actually using a lot of memory pretty efficiently. But on CPUs, it's actually more than half unutilized. So this is actually a great driver of decision making. It tells you that your, whatever you're using in your M1 cluster, you're essentially underutilizing the instances you have there. For example, you might say that I'm very close to the limit on memory, but CPU is underutilized, so I might switch from M4X large to maybe R4 large. So the resources report gives you insight on your resources and how well you're using them. Uh, to zoom down to a second level, you, if you want to look at um, 
out of all the resources being used, how are those resources being allocated to which tasks? And that's the default allocation report gives that information. And if you categorize by, say, yet another um, you know, perspective uh, category, it's showing you that uh, of all the CPUs that are being used, these tasks are the biggest drivers. This report is, in fact, what drives the cost report that I showed you at first. Uh, if you, when you tell us that my cost is being driven by mini CPU or memory or a custom combination of your two, we look at your usage and we look at from your container uh, environment. And we take your cost from your uh, cloud environment and then we tell you this is how much your specific tasks are costing you. Um, so, so far what I've shown you is that you, your cost history report tells you what's going on at cost wise. Uh, your, with the resources report, you can tell how well you're utilizing your available resources. The allocation report allows you to dive in on how your resources are being utilized by tasks. And if you select a relative usage measure, you have some percentage measures as well. It actually tells you, it's actually a really neat and easy way to identify uh, which task, what is the trend going on in your tasks. So you can see here is that this um, KubeQuay service has been creeping up over the last few days. So, Basically, you get two things. You get to right size your clusters accordingly, and you can get notified on whether your specific task or service is uh, being a resource hog. So I, hear, I see a two-minute hog. Um, last thing I want to say is that of all these reports, you can actually create a dashboard if you want to look at all of them at the same time. So if you go to dashboards, and I think there's one created already for Kubernetes. Actually, it's right here. Um, you can choose to create one single page that displays all the reports that you customize and you selected. And you can subscribe to them. Then any user or users in your organization can receive these emails or, or notifications at, at any granularity, at any um, period. Um, last thing I want to say before moving over to that side is um, how easy is it to set up? It's actually really easy to set up. So, if you want basically look at containers and um, clusters, the only thing you have to do is add a cluster, select the Kubernetes orchestration module, and uh, name your cluster, for example, demo, demo EKS1. And it'll tell you, ah, not a good name. It'll tell you, it'll create instructions for you to apply to how to add our collector part into your cluster information. And at that point, we'll start getting information. That's all I add. Thank you. I love that everyone knows the deal now. It's like you don't even need me to host at all. <laughs> everyone just does their demo and then walks himself over. It's, it's almost perfect. autopilot. <laughs> so I had a question. Sure. Uh, you know, I think it's pretty awesome that we can now drill down mm -hmm. uh, costs and figure out down to the container. How much does this container cost us uh, to run on a certain instance, and how much does uh, this deployment cost us? Uh, are, are there any cool stories from customers where they're using that maybe as part of their development mm -hmm. cycle to figure out? Um, you know, how much does it cost to develop a new feature? Right. So there are two things that customers really want from us, and that's essentially what we do in all our other product lines. We first give insight, and then we give recommendations, and then finally we automate it. So if you're working on the second stage of this, and you're helping customers to, based on their usages, how their clusters should be, what is the resource, what is the best resource optimization that they can do that they're not currently making use of. Awesome. So that's uh, the biggest win that we've seen so far. That's really cool. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you so much.